Namaskar and welcome to this exciting new episode of Satology Debunking Mythology. Satology means science of truth or study of truth. Opposite of that is mythology, which means science or study of fake lie or imagination. And today we have very special guests. We'll get started quickly. Special guest Nile Ashok, a big researcher, Muni, Rishi, and Sadhaka. This is a new word I've added. And Acharya also, because he practices what he teaches. So let us, without delay, let us welcome Nilesh Nilkant Oak. Namaskar, Adityaji. Namaskar. So, so you are coming to San Diego and you'll be in person there signing books and speaking at the Satology Gala Dinner on 22nd July. What would you like to say on that to invite other people? Well, I would like to invite people from all over, but especially uh, from a logistics perspective, uh, people from greater San Diego area, greater Los Angeles area, Los Angeles, and uh, the Southern California, uh, possibly Arizona. You know, it's not that far a right. Uh, those who would like to come and join, please go to various links. I have posted them. Uh, on my social handles like Twitter and Facebook, but of course uh, on Satology, anybody, you know, a basic requirement is like people know how to use Google, you know, type Satology, <laughs> they can get to the link, book your ticket, and it's going to be a very exciting uh, program. Uh, many other uh, individuals, dignitaries would be showing up. Uh, so please check the details and look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. So the recently Udaipur incident has really challenged everybody's thought process now and uh, and the sanatan dharma's implementation arm is varnashram and varnashram has been vilified uh, by vilifying manusmriti varnashram system has been like a uh, vilified and also uh, you know a, in a pejorative way it has been referred to as by most of the european minded scholars or europeans or european minded scholars so if Varnashram was there, how could this incident be avoided, according to you? Uh, if, uh, okay, well, I mean, that's a good question, but let's go back to two, three things that you mentioned. So Udaipur event is one, then the European mind's effort and ability and actually a failure to grasp the Varnashram Dharma, why that possibly occurred. And how a Varnashram system would have avoided a thing like this. Okay, so three levels. Uh, for example, if you look at the Abrahamic uh, religious structure, so let's simply understand that it is a ideology. Now, that is not to say that there can be, so we do not deny the possibility of individuals, and we see them all around actually, a few individuals who actually transcend that ideology, they take a selective portion from uh, the Abrahamic uh, religions, whether it is a Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, and use it to better their individual life. That is possible, okay? Uh, so that's one part. But otherwise, uh, typically it remains ideology-based ideal, uh, ideology uh, type of philosophy. For example, Judaism is the God's chosen race. Point is like, don't ask the question why. Or for Christianity, uh, yes, there is a Jesus and all that. But the reality, if you study more and more, uh, Joseph Campbell describes it beautifully, but there are many others who have described it. It is a salvation through community. Okay, And if you come to Islam, it is the focus on the book, like whatever is said there is the truth. And what is the problem with that? Uh, I mean, there is a value to uh, trusting a certain source, like a Shabda, for example, but and Shabda from even a reliable source. The problem is even within the Islamic scholars, you can see this going back and forth, like uh, certain things that certain uh, sect does not uh, like, then they will say this was not there, this was added afterwards. My point is they have not taken for most part uh, all three uh, Abrahamic religions, I would say, to a comprehensive approach, like the quadrangulation or triangulation of science, Shruti Pratyaksham, or quadrangulation of what Krishna is saying, you know, Shruti Pratyaksham Aitiyam Anumanam Chatushtam. So that's the issue. 
Now let's come to the Varnashram. Uh, if you see Christianity, I mean, that's what I have noticed. So therefore, I will talk about it. I don't know much about Islam or Judaism. I have not seen it. Uh, in Christianity, you see the emphasis on a service. Okay, now that's not the emphasis. But what I'm saying is uh, through the things such as called missionary work, right, or missions. Uh, for example, in an Indian context, I mean, it's all a uh, uh, very sad story. And uh, I hope that it comes out with all the truth uh, is say Mother Teresa. Okay. I mean, it's a very sad story under the garb of a service, a lot of atrocities happen. But today, because that's not a subject, the point I want to bring it is that to a, a mainstream Christian mind, so for example, take North America as a context, many of in, many in the North America uh, are not simply aware of what is happening around the world, how people are exploited in the name of Christianity. Many of them are not aware. In fact, they are part of the they are part of this crime. But do you know how? Because uh, there are these middlemen, middlemen, middle women. I mean, say middle persons who will create this facade of how they are doing the service in other countries and taking the message of Christianity. But in reality, they are making themselves rich by collecting donations from the individual churches here. And the people re remain here novice and ignorant about what is happening. But again, the point I want to bring it up is that there is that element that you will see in Christianity of a service. And where does that come from? It comes from like uh, Jesus giving the message, right? So the what you see in the New Testament, like, you know, do the service, do the seva, the so-called sermon on the, uh, you know, on the, from the mount. Now let's bring that to Varnashram. In Varnashram system, or if you take Bhagavad Gita as a reference book, Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtam Gunakarma Vibhagasha, and everywhere there is an emphasis for an individual, like yat karosh, yad asnasi, yad josi, dadasi, yad, follow your swadharma, swakarmi kusumi tasa pujita moksha labato. If you are following your swadharma and through that, what the swakarma that you are doing, that's it. Just do that. Nothing else is required. Now, a European mind, which was extremely simplistic, and in some, when it comes to uh, adhyatma, it is very simplistic, simple turn even today. I mean, you can find that in the uh, academics uh, departments of South Asian study, Hindu studies. I mean, when they come to Hindu study, they have no ability to understand. So they create utter nonsense and chaos. So now what happens? The Varnashram system, which is a very natural, very natural evolutionary system, what the so this is like you know Krishna Singh Chaturvarnam Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Like what is what do you mean by his creation? That is from that Prakriti Purusha, you know, from the world's creation. It's a so natural system. But the Europeans showed incapability, first initially to Portuguese, who were extremely mad people, extremely dogmatic, and that dogmatism is hurting them right now. I mean, the, if you see the Portuguese were the last to, to leave India, even after British, British left 1947, supposedly. They, are, they left many slaves, you know, mental slaves in India. We can see them in important positions today. But, uh, go, go, I mean, Portuguese left Goa 1960. But if you today go and see the condition of Portugal, it's extremely horrible. Okay, why is that? Because they never came out of their religious dogma. But in Varnashram system, we don't even talk about a service. Well, actually we do. But my point is, it's not said in the way the Christianity says. Now, therefore, that Christian people with a Christian thinking, uh, the middle, uh, middle age thinking, you can say, and that still pervades as far as the religion goes, when they try to understand Varnashram system, they did not understand it. Quickly, last point, uh, how Varnashram system would have avoided it. Now, remember, Varnashram system, it's talking about Chatur Varnim Maya Srishtam, Guna Karma, so depending on your certain ability, you are certain ability and uh, inkling, you are doing a certain thing. And therefore, it comes with certain responsibilities and certain rules. That is one given. But the last point is swa karma and swa dharma. Once you understand that definition, the kind of act, the kind of act that was done by these mad folks, okay, for this uh, uh, humble tailor <laughs> in, in Udaipur, 
it would just should not happen just happen it would not happen i would say but it may occasionally happen in the sense of a vikruti meaning somebody has some mental problem but that must be recognized and that should not be eulogized you know should not be praised as certain religious folks are doing right now back to you uh, aditya ji no the india in india the pappu khandan is also doing it the pappu said it is like a mental disease and it's a bacche their children mm-hmm. and and everybody knows that pappu is the biggest child here 52 year old and uh, and when we say uh, there is a bhagavat quote, quote also ata pumbi dwise shrestha varnasham vibhagasya sanushita se dharma se samsay dirhi toshana you know the, the purpose of varnasham you know and the it is a responsibility of the the teachers or the brahman varna Mm-hmm. and again uh, brahman varna to actually create chhatriya also mm-hmm. because it's a it's a the, the people have misunderstand that in uh, varnashram the police is a colonial concept in varnashram the responsibility of protection of the family is individual yes and social individual social. and social, social not not a special authority like police you know police yeah it is a community policing and uh, an individual family must be empowered enough the father the son that they are strong enough to protect themselves mm-hmm. self and yeah. community also village panchayat also yeah so i think without varnashram the solution is not possible anywhere in the world not just india yes the okay. same problem solved the problems other countries also yeah and quickly i want to make a point on that uh, policing you know policing as a separate organization yes it is a very ineffective system you know and uh, the british Uh, because they used it as a uh, what you call threat you know Control. to the ordinary folks right and with that they have brainwashed us because uh, if, <coughs> what are, what are the what the average indian thinks uh, like you know bhai modi kuch karne rahe right? like you know what modi is not doing what the police are not doing Pol- what is a police another human being okay what police has ability most of the abilities you also have and especially i mean see america i mean although uh, if you look at the ratios you know india the uh, human beings i mean what you call the the population to police that ratio is very very small okay i mean sorry population is very high i mean whichever way you take the ratio the police to people is a very small. very small the point is because it's a social policing you know which is goes back to the varnashram you know or the swadharma like you cannot say oh i did my morning um, uh, you know yama niyama pranayam adhyaya adhyar and so on i did my swadhyay and now i am going uh, and doing some murder that just doesn't fit into it you know so yeah it is a, it is a social work social through the social system it work uh, but what happens is that here also we notice in america also you notice like suddenly some person is having some injury we immediately call 911 which is correct but men, i mean america is somewhat better people will go and somebody know cpr they will help but many times they will just not do anything you know let the official agencies do their work and unfortunately that is uh, that is there in indian mind also like why why the police are not doing anything you know people don't realize their own responsibility and th- which means what there is a vikruti in, in our varnashram system as far as the uh, indian system is also concerned and we need to bring those values uh, back in the proper light no there is a law in the united states there was a very famous supreme court judgment that police has an option of sit out of a conflict not intervene mm. interesting as american law and mm. so supreme court upheld it so it is the right of the citizens to protect themselves that's why second amendment is there very good and, and the the same so india has copied american constitution but bhim rao ambedkar has copied american constitution but he did not copy the good parts of it <laughs> you know, he copied incompletely like then uh, in we always say the copy cats always uh, copy the half baked version i mean if uh, if the community policing is there just like denying the attacker the right to escape mm. that fear itself mm. it's a, it's a deter attacker Ah. plus plus uh, manu smriti very clearly says one who attacks must be killed hmm. and there is no sin in his incurred in doing that yeah so when you have such kind of situations uh, police in india the state police are so corrupt i i uh, you know i i always uh, when i when i land in india i always tell the american consulate i am in india so that the american consulate is aware <laughs> the american citizen is there 
Yeah. Because police is so incorrupt, incompetent in India. We can't even describe it. But anyway, uh, we'll get started with the Mahabharata thing. Perfect. If you want to read Mahabharata, learn from it also. Not just Mahabharata is some story and which is all these concepts are explained very well in Anushasan Parva, in uh, Dandaniti and many parts of Mahabharata. You know, that is also very important. Well, I would add uh, to add what Aditya ji said, not only also important, that is important. In fact, that is the very reason this is going on. Right. But if people see pe- people take this as some uh, like a religious katha, the katha, which is a Western view again. The, yeah. But you know, it's so much internalized more in India than in the West, frankly. That's right. That's right. Okay. I mean, just jake baito, talia bajao, just come home. I mean, that's what people think, right? That's one. And if you don't understand that this is meant for what? Dharmartha, Kama, Moksha, Nam, Upadesham, Saman. It is meant to be guidance for your everyday life, you know? That's and right. people say, but in that verse, what is the guidance for me? That is the level of deterioration of the intellect that has happened because people don't know how to take that wisdom. It's a transformational wisdom. This is not an information. Okay, this is a wisdom. It's a transformational wisdom that is to be imbibed day at a time, as worse at a time. And that's why that's how we have to do it. And that's why we are doing it. So sometimes you say, oh, why are you talking planets? Well, we're talking of planets to understand, d- develop the artha, develop some passion for something, develop the curiosities, you know, artha jidnyasu artharthi, have a purpose for each individual artharthi, have a purpose, specifically purpose driven, sa prayojana sandik, then go work on it. That's how you become jnani. No, Anyways, no, no. I, I did enough of my uh, Rara there, but let me get back quickly to this. No, we, we are we are actually uh, we are actually building the faith of people so that they can read with more vigor. Yes, shraddha, shraddha. and so sh- through only through shraddha karma shakti comes. Exactly, uh, and shraddha can be of a sattvic kind or of a tamasic kind. For and example, tamasic. take the Udaipur uh, event. Uh, the those two uh, miscreants who created this very heinous crime. Uh, see, they are fueled by a certain faith, right? They are fueled by it. Right or wrong, that people have to use either intellect to understand. But that karma shakti, that almost the fearlessness, if you want to call it, because they got caught and, you know, they should be punished in the rightful fashion. My point is, but that the uh, the Sanatanis have to understand. Sanatanis has to have to build it. Okay. So, yes, what uh, Aditya just said, we are building that Shraddha into people, not the Andha Shraddha, the Shraddha. What we discuss here, that is a starting point for you guys. That is not something to blindly believe, clap. Uh, you know, enjoy that there was a 40 minutes of entertainment and just go back to your everyday life without changing anything. If you have not trans, if you are not different intellectually from yesterday, uh, or if you are not different after reading a book or after watching one of the programs like these, then you have not, you have basically wasted your time. Okay. Yes. That's, that's what it means. Okay. So this is, this is to create a Shraddha. This is also to show you how the Bhakti, what the Bhakti means. Artha Jidnyasu, Artharthi, Jnanicha, Bharatrashava. These are four types of Udara Bhakta. Okay. That's what uh, Krishna is saying. And how to combine this. And that's what we are discussing here. Uh, to have a passion, to have a curiosity, to have a Saprayojana, a very specific purpose and make yourself a all-rounder personality uh, through your body, through your mind and through your intellect. Uh, See, the so, thing is, uh, the, the yeah. dand is also according to the kukarma. So, vibhatsa mm-hmm. rupa dand is required in such kind of heinous crimes. Like, Correct. this is like a shaken up 1 billion people, 1.2 1. billion people are shaken up with this kind of incident. You know, and that right. too, they're celebrating on the video, which is worse than anything. Yeah, and it should shake them, it should shake people and not give a reactive reaction, so to say, you know, but think in a proactive way what they need to do every day, every minute with their family, with their friends, with their colleagues, at workplace, at home, in society, you know, I mean, that's what uh, this should make people think and act. That's the idea. All right. So back to this, guys. So if you think this is only about the dating of a Mahabharata, well, this is about dating about the Mahabharata. But if that was the only objective, I can tell you, I would not have bothered to, to do this. I would not have bothered. I have discussed my journey many uh, many times in the past, so not uh, necessarily uh, uh, worth elaborating. But it started with Bhagavad Gita. 
for example, when um, during the freedom struggle, India's freedom struggle from the oppression, the colonial and uh, you know imperial oppression of the British, when they used to take uh, intellectuals and throw them into the prison. Okay, they thought you know that with the ordinary people, they are just busy you know with their affairs and they may not know. Uh, with the British used to not allow certain uh, magazines, newspapers to these political prisoners uh, who were inside, you know, at that time. But British were, you know, as much as with they were cunning and all that, they were, uh, because as we talked about why the uh, European mind did not understand Hinduism or Sanatan Vedic Dharma before, and even they don't understand it today. For most part, I'm talking just like many Indians, unfortunately, majority Indians don't understand it today. Uh, that followed. So they allowed easily to these uh, political prisoners, Indian uh, freedom fighters, a Bhagavad Gita inside. So they say, I would like to have a copy of a Bhagavad Gita. And to them, they thought it is just some religious thing. Because remember, Europe only understood religion. Europe did not understand Dharma. Why is that? The Dharma culture existed, but it has been wiped out for last uh, 2000 years. So they have totally lost what Dharma is, you know, during that time when they came. Anyways, so quick summary, the Arundhati Vasishta gives us that uh, time bracket, no Mahabharata war in last 6,500 years, only before that, but also no Mahabharata war before, say, uh, 12,000 years. Okay, so uh, before 10,000 BC, it's not possible. Bhishma Nirvana gave a much tighter, nice, beautiful, short interval of, say, 2,000 years from 5,000 BC to 7,000 BC. That's the only time one should look for the year of Mahabharata war. If you look at additional Mahabharata evidence, it gives you a beautiful 1600 year time interval from 5100 BC to say 6700 BCE. And only within that, the Mahabharata war is possible. We looked at why we should not look at just random, arbitrary, uh, selective evidence, how all other Mahabharata researchers, exception none, use this approach. They will even show you how Madhya Pradesh fits into uh, Madhya Pradesh fits into United States map, and they will also show you how Arizona can fit into India. Okay, now guys, they are doing for their own self benefit. Okay, whatever the agenda they have in mind. So don't come and ask me like you know what's a disagreement. Study my work, study their works, and figure it out for yourself. You have to increase your intellect if you don't have it. Or you have to find with the Shraddha that you have, <laughs> okay, if you are, want to be lazy and don't do anything about it, just take the Shraddha that you have, Sattvik, Rajasi or Tamasi, find whoever you fits comfortable and start talking about it, okay. In Indian languages, and so let's, it begins with Sanskrit, that also went out to Europe, but that's not a subject today. In Sanskrit, there is no word for teaching. Okay, now most of the people know this, but those who don't know, they'll say, what do you mean? Like, Are kya bhai, adhyapak, shikshak, acharya. Once you go to the etymology, you know, the nirukta, once you go to the base of that, you'll find it means learning. It means understanding. It means comprehending. It means internalizing. Okay, intellectually wisdom. I mean, that's what it talks about, shiksha. You know, adhyapan, adhyapan, adhyayan, adhyapan. So what is adhyapak? Adhyapak is the one who may assist you. Shikshak is the one who can assist you. The point I'm saying is, usually people will go and say, bhai, mujhe bata do some Bhagavad Gita, which should I should read? Are, damn it. It's so common sense. Just pick the first available Bhagavad Gita that you are capable of understanding. Now, if you find something that this doesn't make sense to me, this translation doesn't make sense to me, go find another translation. It is only you, you, each one of us who can learn, other people may assist out of kindness, out of affection. You cannot demand this. That's why Tadvidi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya Upadekshan Tite Jnanam Dhyanina Sattva Darshina. You have to be humble about it. Okay. Yeah, you cannot demand. You have to be very humble about asking this, but it is your responsibility to learn this. So if you want to see the fraud, of a Mahabharata dating in the broad daylight, 
you have to improve your intellect and see who is fitting madhya pradesh in the map of united states and who is trying to fit arizona into the map of india okay that was the point takeaway i had wanted to show you last time we also looked at uh, the mercury evidence last time so i want to go through that like tiryak rising of mercury so it was this somasya uh, putro abhidaya tiryak that's what we looked at last time today as far as the planetary evidence is concerned i want to close it we are doing this now possibly for 7 8 uh, a close to 10 episodes i don't know the exact number the point i want to emphasize is the planetary evidence the graha evidence graha saksha in the mahabharata text is super rich 50 plus specific astronomy planetary observations okay the five visual planets sun moon and there is a comet description also near nakshatra pushya you know that has become tishthati okay uh, and also akramya just like saturn is tishthati and akramya near chitra or jupiter is tishthati and akramya near jeshta and sorry did i say jeshta and saturn near chitra so we have that and what i'm going to show you today is actually a highlights of it there are many additional conjunctions uh, sometime in a generic language that's why i have not picked them today to demonstrate because you know the discussion if if you have not started with arundhati if you have not done bhishma nirvana if you have not read my books if you have not listened to say at least 20 to 50 uh, different talks of mine if you have not read at least 100 out of 500 blog articles you are not going to understand any of this okay so yeah there is a tapasya is required that's why if you go to taittiriya upanishad the story appears very simple you know like shankaracharya when he talks about it he he discusses things like the way we will explain things to 6 year old well why just shankaracharya gnaneshwar explains the same way tukarama explains the same way eknath maharaj explains the same way ramdas swami explains the same way kelyane hota hai re adi kele chi paise okay Uh, if you want to accomplish certain things uh, you have to do it and if you do it it will happen now you somebody will say what is there in it well people have become so vikrut <laughs> so deracinated so degraded in their intellect that even these things needs to be told uh, samartha ramdas swami needed to tell these things 400 years ago and our situation is rather worse okay so again that's why i'm mentioning these points they they may look like a blabber i mean if you are a blabber and if you don't like it don't listen to it as simple as that but uh we have to take uh, each one of us has to take responsibility that is what is told by the story from taittiriya upanishad when bhrugu okay uh, bhrugu goes to his father but also guru to varuna bhrugu that's why it's known as a bhrugu varuni vidya and he says father tell me what is brahma isn't that how aditya ji we get the comments on um, <laughs> in our youtube videos or other places like yeah please tell me like he say as in on twitter i will uh, quote some uh, words and i will not give a reference to it it's deliberate i do that i will put just a sanskrit words and immediately the person will say hey, like just please explain to me where it is from now sometime i will give a reference just to test people and they will say yeah but please also provide the translation in this context very important you understand this bhrugu varuni vidya or bhrugu varuni katha so bhrugu goes to his father and says father please tell me what is a brahma and Var- varuna <coughs> his father bhrugu's father but also guru he says go to tapasya yeah that's a great question you are asking go to tapasya and find the answer <coughs> so bhrugu goes does a lot of tapasya which is what shruti pratyaksha maitiyam anumanam chatushtayam you have to read shruti you have to read smruti you have to read itihasa which is our epics okay then you have to learn pratyaksha uh, and anumana you have to learn scientific method you have to learn nyay darshana that will teach you how to think properly how to draw inferences properly bring all this information together draw your own conclusions do something on your own then humbly tadvidi pranipate na pariprashnena sevaya approach a person who is knowledgeable about it ask that person have i uh, understood this right have i drawn the conclusion right and the person may correct you or person may tell you that you have done it right 
Then you go to the next one. Again, you don't say, so now you tell me everything. No, that's not how it works. Actually, uh, Brugu came back, you know, with this realization, Annam Brahmeti Vajana. He said, my dear father and a guru, I understood that Anna is Brahma because he just went and did the observation in the nature. That is what Krishna is asking you to do in Bhagavad Gita. Chandavasi yasya paranani yastam vedasa vedavit. This knowledge, this wisdom, transformational wisdom is not hiding in some book. If you are not willing to understand the nature, it is simplified for you in the Bhagavad Gita. But after reading Bhagavad Gita, you have to go back to nature and start observing around. So then he says, now father, I understood Annam Brahmeti Vajanat. Now you tell me what is Brahma, meaning your understanding of a Brahma. And what did uh, Varuna does? Varuna says, go back, do more tapasya. And Bhrugu goes back. That is also understanding it. Bhrugu did not keep on arguing and fighting, kept on arguing and fighting with Varuna. He went back, did more tapasya. Then he comes back and he says, yeah, I understood Annam Brahmeti Vajana. That understanding is correct, but there is a higher understanding. Okay, Prano Brahmeti Vajana. And I'm not going to tell you the whole story. Then it goes to Mano Brahmeti Vajana, then Vidyana Brahmeti Vajana, Ananda Brahmeti Vajana. And still there is something more that the Atma that cannot be even described in the language, but it can be understood internally. That is a tapasya. The tapasya is the only way that how you are going to understand. So again, what I'm going to show you, uh, don't come and just say, oh, but there was this one observation that you did not discuss. If I did not discuss, there is a reason for it. It was left for you to figure it out. I have discussed that in my books. I have discussed it in my blogs. I discuss it in my various lectures. Every lecture will not able to discuss everything. Today, we are going, what I'm going to show you is the highlights. But again, these highlights, Aditya Ji, uh, so we, we did uh, all of these. Remember, we talked about eclipses. We talked about physician, physician positions of the moon. We talked about the Akramya motion, Vakri motion, retrograde motion, Pida motion, Tiryak motion. Conjunctions also we have talked. We are going to talk about them again. Okay, These are the conjunctions of a different kind. These are not the only conjunctions in the Mahabharata text. Actually, there are more. I'll just briefly mention some, at least that immediately come to my mind. So there are not only 10 conjunctions. My point is they each of them acts as a poison pill for any other claim for the year of Mahabharata other than 5561 BC, because they will not able to demonstrate these descriptions of the Mahabharata text as valid for any other date other than 5561 BC. Now, as I said, why they are poison pills? I'll tell you that in a minute. Uh, so first three, we have already looked at it. We'll go very fast through that. Seven grahas near the sun a few days before the war. Seven grahas attacking the moon on the 14th day of the war. And seven grahas going away from the sun. In this description, guys, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto comes. Now, immediately people are again going back to like a 500 years ago, the dark ages of the Europe. Because the Europeans have taught these guys and Europe, these uh, brown sahib, you know, have brown slaves, slaves and brown sahibs have internalized this knowledge in a, such a fraudulent way that they cannot just come out of it. Oh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Yeah. Which what it does is tell you is that unless you take those into account, you will not able to describe these three observations of seven planets near sun, seven planets attacking the moon, seven planets going away from the sun. Then people say, oh, but that were found just in the last 150 years. Yeah, not any different than Vasco de Gama discovering India 500 years ago. Okay, or Columbus discovering America 500 years ago, whereas uh, the native population of America, they discovered it thousands and thousands of years ago, definitely more than 30,000 plus years ago. Okay, so remember the discovery, understand the definition of discovery. But after that, uh, there are like I'm giving you uh, six, addi three, seven additional one moon near Nakshatra Krutika, 12th day of the war. I'm not discussing today moon near Nakshatra Punarvasu on the 16th day of the war. This is all there. Mars and Mercury uh, conjunction, they are in the nearby, in the vicinity of each other. They could be seen in the sky at the same time, okay, either before sunrise or after sunset. Venus and Mercury, Venus and Mars, Venus and Mercury again, another time describes Saturn and Moon. And on the 18th day of the war, again, Venus, Mars, and Mercury together 
and on the 18th day of the war, Saturn and Moon. Very, very specific reasons. I mean, each of this, we can take this verse and talk about it for an hour. We can talk about it for a day. That much wisdom is packed into each of these observations. Of course, we are going to do it in like next uh, 20 minutes. We have already done this. Seven planets near sun a uh, few days before the Mahabharata war when the moon was near Nakshatra Maga. On the 14th day of the war, full moon, okay, being attacked by seven planets. The way, you know, the analogy is used, the way seven Kaurava brothers attacked Bhima. On the 16th day of the war, seven planets are seen going away from the sun. Nishcharanto Vyadrushanta Suryat Sapta Mahagraha. Okay. Uh, this is when Karna took over as the military general for the Kaurava army. Uh, on the 12th day of the war, we say Malya Damavata Raja, Shweta Chatrena Dharyata, Krutika Yoga Yukteno, Purna Masya Ambi, Venduna, Induna, Indu, that's the moon. Okay. A full moon like moon near Nakshatra Krutika on the 12th day of the war, 27 October 5561 BC. You can see it's right. Full moon like moon. Okay, like 75% plus uh, visible plus brightness near Nakshatra Krutika. Um, then if you go to, I don't know the exact day, like the first day of the war, like, you know, the war begins. And as the Vasudev, uh, with the help of his disciples, but also Sanjay and those reports coming in, uh, and Vasudev is also observing it many times. The way he's describing like a, a couple of warriors, let's say, with few warriors in between, like say, think of Venus and Jupiter, but the way the war is going on, okay, um, uh, the, the fighting like a fight between Mars and Mercury, okay, and you could show that for the first day of the war, just after sunset, that is the picture that we would have seen. Uh, if you go further, like again, the another descriptions from the first day, again, what is interesting is two warriors. Just for simplicity, I'm not taking the names of the warriors, okay? Because then immediately people start asking, who is that individual? Again, Bhrugu Varuni Vidya. Guys, go back to Mahabharat, start reading, start understanding, start comprehending, start understanding the transformational wisdom that is there. Two warriors fighting like Venus fighting with the Mars, you know, it's just a comparison. Yeah, at the sunset, when say, just imagine Vasudeva is making notes for the day of what happened. Just at the sunset, war has stopped. The first day war stopped right at the sunset. And this is what you're going to see in the sky. Okay, Mars and Venus in the sky. Okay, just like Venus, Shukra Angarak fighting, you know. Then um, if you go to the ninth day of the war, uh, there is another <coughs> fight going on. We say in this case, Drona and Arjun. And Vasudev does a comparison of that with uh, Venus fighting with the Mercury. Okay, and again, you can see that just at the sunset, this is a horizon, sun is ready to set. And you can see here, um, the Venus horizon. And then, you know, of course, you can just look at the Jupiter. And if you want to, Vasudev has not done that. But if you want to do that analogy, you can see the Jupiter, you know, as a representation of their Krishna, you know, the charioteer of Arjun. And of course, uh, Mercury is Arjun and then Venus fighting with the Drona and so on, you know. Uh, this, remember? It's a Arshakavya, it's a poetry. The Itihasa is told to us through an epic poem. Okay. And that's why these uh, beautiful analogies come. If you go further to the 14th day of the war, okay, again, you have this description of uh, Venus, okay, which is uh, uh, Bhargava here referred to as a Bhargava, Venus fighting with uh, Mercury, okay, that you see again in a Drona Parva. Again, you can see that description. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, this last one, I have discussed this before, but I want to take a couple of minutes to explain that. Because this was so fascinating for me, fascinating for a couple of reasons. First thing, even after reading the Mahabharat, say 30 plus times, exclusively looking for astronomy evidence, I had missed this. And my uh, thanks to Sai Swarupaji, when she was doing a detailed study of the 18 days of the war, all the different dynamics of it, I made a request to her that uh, if she would be kind enough to note down any astronomy references and bring it to my attention. And of course, she, when she brought those references, if I had already figured it out, then I thanked her and said, yeah, thank you very much. But I had, uh, I had found it before. 
but then she brought like a, i forgot now but possibly four or five or six references astronomy references from the 18 days of the war which i had missed that's how fascinating mahabharat is what is more fascinating is that all of those references match for 5561 bc and even further fascinating more more fascinating is that they only match for 5561 bc and this one is a very interesting one because it shocked me in a multiple ways first thing i said how did i miss this okay because it's a very obvious one uh, you know it says vyadrushanta tada shalyo yudhishthira samipata okay so shalya and yudhishthir by coming close they were fighting and this this the scene looked like what is up in the sky terrestrial is equal to celestial celestial is equal to terrestrial rane chandra maso bhashche shaneshchara iva graha the way as if the saturn and a moon fighting in the sky and i said why saturn and a moon for heaven's sake i mean what is there on that 18th day now remember in order to do this there's a one more another point i want to say why many people like i know a 9 year old boy you know who has the whole bhagavad gita by heart and you can just give him a 3.17 and he will start saying that verse or you can just give a partial line of bhagavad gita and he will say say it. and he also understands the meaning of it okay now the reason i'm saying is some people think are is there in the book no i have a book and i have the book at home if i need something i will go there no guys that's not how the wisdom works that's not how you solve practical problems that's not how you solve your life problems that's not how you solve problem at workplace you have to have that wisdom internalized that's why the word acharya the one who brings that wisdom into one's actions one's living acharan okay how would you bring it that into acharan actually if you have internalized it my point is when i was solving this jigsaw puzzle of the mahabharata dating grantham granthi tada chakre munir gudam kutuhala do you know what i was doing i just it's not sufficient that i have a list of nakshatras and is there in some book somewhere or on some map no i should have it right in my head and i have it and that's the only way i could solve it the reason i'm mentioning this is in spite of that when uh, sai swarupa yerji brought this reference to my mind and i was not in front of my computer like you know i read it on my smartphone uh, through whatsapp or what not and then i said hmm 18th day of the war and saturn and moon why would vasudeva just describe this there must be some other planets of course and uh, i couldn't exactly at that time think the position of the moon in the context of the saturn so i said in my mind i didn't tell her in my mind i said well maybe this observation does not match for 5561 bc then when finally i had a chance to get to my simulations and mathematical calculations lo and behold and that's what i'm showing you simulation is easy to show because it's a visual okay if i give mathematical calculation and if i say oh the uh, moon was near nakshatra sorry at the 90 degree and then uh, uh, saturn was around 100 degree you know uh, whatever people will not able to make sense of it okay but visual is good through the whole night after moon uh, was you know in the sky okay it's a second part of the uh, lunar month vadya paksha uh, so moon rise around say 9 10 pm from that time until the sunrise the only two graha that were there in the sky on the 18th night or 18th day or 17th night whichever way you want to look at it in the sky through the night guess what only full moon full moon like moon and saturn that's how precise that's how accurate that's how stunning and impressive vasudeva has coded and encoded the astronomy evidence yes it is true that we have this text now for 7500 years and some errors because of the commentators people writing on the palm leaves and then they copying from it have entered that is no text no grantha of the world is free from these errors but these some errors that get entered actually makes our case for 5561 bc even more impressive because in spite of some interpolations in spite of some errors translation error transposition error uh, interpolation errors 
when we look at the whole evidence 300 plus evidence and when we try to put together in a jigsaw puzzle fashion solving a crossword puzzle jigsaw puzzle a complex puzzle together everything points to 55 61 bc and for a specific 18 days from 16th october to 2nd november this is the last day of the mahabharat war okay 18th day of the mahabharat war just uh, one last thing possibly okay so that that's moon there and this is saturn only two graha in the sky through the night on the 18th day of the war. So for that, you can take either the 17th night or the 18th night, doesn't matter. For observations, you have to always give plus minus one, plus minus two days, you know, because we don't know exactly when Vasudev made the observation and so on and so forth. Also, whether the observation was made during the early morning hours or after sunset. So that can cause a change of plus minus one day. It doesn't change anything. This is a, another simulation, okay, uh, for Mars, Venus, and Mercury. One last reference here. Uh, on the 18th day of the war, we also see Bhrugu, Suno, Dhara, Putro, Shashi, Jaina, Samanvito. Three planets. Bhrugu, Suno, that's a Venus. Dhara, Putro. English, the, we use the word sun. Guess what? It is from Sanskrit. Now, people will say, come on, is this true? Yeah, we are so deracinated that we even don't know that. Not only that, when someone tries to tell you, instead of feeling aha, you feel more doubt, you know, whether, whether some person is just making it up. Bhrugu Suno, son of a Bhrugu, that is Venus referring to Dhara Putro, okay, son of a Dhara. That is the beauty of a Sanskrit. For one single, uh, you know, explaining something, there will be like 50 different words. Why 50 different words? Because they have come in a different context. And why different context and different words? Because Sanskrit is extremely old. We know that Sanskrit is how Valmiki wrote Ramayana 14,000 years ago. Uh, slightly modified Sanskrit possibly, but Sanskrit is how Vyasadeva wrote Mahabharata 7,500 years ago. And Sanskrit, uh, kind of more archaic, you may say, archaic in the modern language, is how Rugveda is written. It is also a Sanskrit. Now, again, our folks will also fight that that is not a Sanskrit. Okay, then you say, which language is that? Then they will go on a tangent. They change the goalpost. They will never answer your question. These are our pseudo researchers. Our pseudo researchers, let's not just blame everything on the Europeans and, uh, you know, the Western Indologists. This reference, Ibrugu Suno Dhara Putro Shashi Jaina Samanvito, Mars, Venus, and Mercury together. Again, this is a lethal poison pill. No other Mahabharata researcher with no other date with the exception of 5561 BC, will able to show these three planets together in the sky, the way it is described in the Mahabharata text on the 18th day of the war. Okay, I think I'm done. Uh, yeah, this is just another shot of it. Like, you know, so this is like from the similar one, once astronomy software, uh, this one from a similar thing, and this one from using another astronomy software. The reason I'm showing you this, Adityaji, but also really for a benefit of our audience is because when people don't understand what is there, you know, do you know what, how they claim? They will say, first they will think, oh, I, because I don't understand Sanskrit, therefore I don't understand this. Or they will say, because I don't understand astronomy, therefore I don't understand this. I will tell you guys, this is, if this is a news, then take it that way. No, the reason, if you don't understand what I am showing, uh, like how Arundhati Vasishta observation gives you a bracket, how Bhishma Nirvana evidence gives you another tighter bracket, how all the planetary evidence and not all is even required, but just out of 50, only seven pieces of planetary evidence takes you to 5561 BC. Then you take another five, six pieces, even independent, they also take you to 5561 BC. Naturally, when you look at all 50, the only date they are going to take you is 5561 BC. If you just take Vakra and retrograde observations, total of seven observations from a Mahabharata text, they are going to take you to 5561 BC and no other date. Then you add more, they also take you to 5561 BC. Understanding this does not require the knowledge of Sanskrit. Understanding this does not require the knowledge of astronomy. So why Adityaji people say this? Oh, but you know, I don't know Sanskrit. One day when I retire, I will start studying Sanskrit. Or when day I retire, I will start studying astronomy. Guys, you if, if somebody is thinking they will do this when they retire, they will learn Sanskrit. First thing is not required to understand what I'm doing, but Sanskrit is worth learning. 
they also say when i retire i will understanding astronomy again astronomy is worth learning it is one of the vedanga jyotisha without jyotisha you don't understand the wisdom of veda period okay just like you need to know shiksha you need to know vyakaran you need to know chanda you know i mean everything is required to that extent your knowledge will be hampered but the point is if you are thinking okay once i retire i will study astronomy or learn astronomy once i retire i'll study saras uh, sorry sanskrit you are fooling yourself you are in a fool's paradise that will simply not happen some of the uh, individuals uh, after retirement you know and uh, they spend time just doing what they wanted to do thinking that will bring them all the joy and things and you know yes it's required for sustenance we need to do it now in their uh, 70s and 80s and they say oh i should have learned this i should have done this but now i can't see properly <laughs> i can hear properly i mean that's what i'm telling you you are in a fool's paradise now are we saying like you have to give up everything not necessarily you decide what is right for your situation you cut down your tv all the garbage that you people will watch otherwise cut down tiktok cut down some of the social media that you think you are wasting your time get to reading get to do some sadhana get to do some chanting okay uh, spend time with in nature chanda asya se pranani astam vedas sabit that is how we are going to do it again this different softwares reason i was showing is so now aditya ji when they say i don't don't understand so school therefore i don't understand this that is a foolish statement i don't understand this they will say because i don't understand astronomy that is equally foolish statement what guys is required is a common sense now aha nobody wants to admit that they lack common sense nobody wants to admit that they do not have a vidyana buddhi nobody wants to admit that they don't have a tarka shastra skill log- logical reasoning skills uh, they don't have it they don't want to admit because then they immediately look foolish okay in front of people well they are <laughs> i mean if they don't understand this in a way their abilities are limited so again i will repeat last one and then i'll come to why i'm showing you using different softwares you don't need a knowledge of sanskrit although it is very useful okay to understand this you don't need a knowledge of astronomy although it is useful to understand this what is required is a common sense what is required is a vidyana buddhi scientific acumen vidyana drushti vidyana buddhi meaning ability to think in a scientific fashion ability to think in a logical fashion tarka buddhi tarka shastra tantra yukti common sense so if you struggle guys you don't have to announce that you don't have a common sense introspect and see why am i not understanding this and i am giving you the answers that it's not due to your lack of sanskrit and it's not due to your lack of astronomy i know of astronomy professors in american universities with phd's they are not just phd they are professors and they don't understand number of these things guys i know people with sanskrit knowledge okay you may know the them too same thing with the astronomy professors but when it comes to the dating of mahabharata or mahabharata astronomy evidence or mahabharata evidence they create utter nonsense they are talking about this in a twitter <laughs> and they are talking about this in a google forum and they are talking about this on the facebook okay they have some titles they have academic they like to boast their knowledge of sanskrit they like to boast their knowledge of their phd academy and something they are utterly non they talk utterly nonsensical stuff guys i'm telling you knowledge of sanskrit is full knowledge of astronomy is full not required what you first require is a common sense once you understand this or take it with a shraddha for even sec and just start studying start putting that tapasya quickly last for an aditya ji um why different softwares i just showed here using this is a voyager and this is another star i don't remember even the name of it it's giving the same output now remember how the role of samshaya comes in just like using the same astronomy evidence of the mahabharata text 130 plus people claim that they have arrived at different dates what is the right samshaya the samshaya that should come your mind is not that therefore the astronomy evidence of the mahabharata text must be confusing that is a one possibility but have you read mahabharata many decorated indic researchers make this foolish argument that the astronomy evidence of a mahabharata text is not consistent and you go ask them what is the astronomy evidence they will just refer to some other person some mr shastri has already explained that in uh, 1900 or 50 years ago 
you know, in the my early days, like 1990s, I used to go and start collecting these in the papers and I have them, all of them. I mean, utter foolishness is being discussed and some decorated person of our times is quoting some another foolish person and just saying that, oh, that person has already explained. No, that person has not even referred to single astronomy reference from the Mahabharata text. This is how a fraud has occurred when it comes to our Indian text, Indian Shastra, their dating, but many beyond dating, many other aspects of uh, our ancient Indian narratives. If you want to fix it, you cannot just quote some other translation and just say, look, this translation differs from you. There is one troll out there, you know, with a PhD. He will just quote such nonsense. You know, he will, <laughs> he will quote some other translation and say, this translation doesn't match with mine. You know, uh, yeah. So great, that should raise a some shade. Now let's discuss whose translation is correct. But the, that person, in spite of his PhD, has no ability. So guys, some, some textbook, like, you know, some certificate is not a guarantee of anything. In old times, you know, the Acharyas did not give certificates. They gave a Vrata Snatak. When the person is there, there was a ceremony and, and a guru used to do a Snan, give a Snan to his student. That was the, that's why the word comes Snatak. And some person who said, you know what, Ye mere bas ki baat nahi hai. I don't understand this. They said, that's fine. But you have understood yama, niyama, right? The good moral behavior, okay? Hard work. Somebody gives you an instruction how to properly follow the instructions. Do your swadharma. Perfect. You also graduate. You are a vratasnata. You may not get a vidyasnata degree, but you are vratasnata. And the person who did not want a Vidyasnatak degree, did not want a fake degree, fake degree in the sense he did not deserve it or she did not deserve it. So they did not want it. Today, people, when they don't deserve, they want these degrees, you know. Now back to this one, why is that? So when there is a social, softwares are giving same outcome. But if two software don't give the same outcome, you don't say, oh, therefore you cannot trust softwares. There is another PhD, you know. <laughs> who propounds such nonsense? You know, they said astronomy softwares cannot be trusted. <laughs> That's the kind of fraud we have in our contemporary times when it comes to dating of Mahabharata. If two software, astronomy softwares give different results, we have to ask the questions why they're giving different results. What's the difference in their algorithms? And go find those, go correct those. If you do that, it should give the same result, if not identical, similar results. Now, why similar? I'm saying why not identical? Because remember, again, the Indian Shastra, but also the modern Shastra is super empirical. When we do these simulations, when you solve algorithm, I mean, when you have a polynomials, there are polynomials behind this, which you solve for the motion of each planet and their retrograde motion and so on. The accuracy that you choose, every software may choose a different level of accuracy. You might know the floating error, you know, like it says, if the computed value and the target value, let's say, you know, one from the actual versus one from the theory, you can say, if it's less than, you know, the difference between them is less than 0 0.00001, accept this as, they, as if they are equal. You know, that's a truncating error and that can cause this. My point is when there is a difference in the software, ask the question, what is causing the difference and do not reach an utterly foolish conclusion. Therefore, astronomy softwares cannot be trusted. On that, I'm going to stop Adityji. Uh, so with that, we complete uh, the planetary evidence, uh, 50 plus super rich planetary evidence from uh, Mahabharata text that all points to 5561 BC. Now we will get to some other aspects um, from Bhagavad Gita, how we can get to the same thing and other wisdom of Bhagavad Gita and non-astronomy evidence uh, for Mahabharata in our future episodes. Back to you. No, one of the things you, you covered many points and I have many, many points to mention and to discuss with you. Uh, I don't know where to begin with. The first I'll begin with is 22nd July, Friday, Nirej Shok will be in person in San Diego. <laughs> Please meet him in person. He's excited to come. And if you're in LA, San Diego or anywhere, Arizona, Nevada, you are all welcome to come here. Northern Mexico. Northern Mexico also, Tijuana also. You're yeah. very welcome. Yeah. Uh, the second part is that uh, the, the you mentioned about the Sanskrit. Very valid points you made. You know, I have studied Sanskrit till 10th standard. Hmm. You may have studied till 12th standard. 
बट आई लर्न मेजोरिटी ऑफ माई संस्कृत बाय रीडिंग महाभारत रामायण एंड भागवत पुराण एंड गीता एंड सो इफ यू नो देव नागरी यू कैन रीड संस्कृत you may not understand it but at least you can read it yes the problem is that people don't want to read it they're lazy they just want to sit on sit on their what do you call it chhoda <laughs> and just don't do anything and blame everybody else uh, this has told me the wrong meaning don't blame the west don't blame the our gurus blame Correct. yourself yes. first blame yourself because once you admit the fault that's the beginning of solution yes and and if when you when you say that somebody has not or somebody else is not explaining properly that means that you don't have the intellect to understand what he is speaking practically you are saying that yeah and so the only solution is apne haath se chamach chura ke kha lo the best way to understand understand that the kheer is sweet is pick up a spoon and eat it so if you read you know there is a very famous american shloka page by page be a sage <laughs> <laughs> good one <laughs> you know it's like inch by inch another shloka i'll tell you inch by inch is a cinch yard by yard is too hard okay so we have to follow inch by inch so so whom should we blame nilesh ji like ourselves or others ourselves i mean see others may have played their part okay but um, that's others right what are we going to do about it are we willing to take responsibility for our part and our part is all of us each one of us individually and see that's what happens now like people say now people will say oh write a book on this yeah i when i get a chance i'll write a book on it but if somebody is in a somebody is in a thought process that once that book is written all problems will be solved then they are in a fool's paradise right, right? so everyone has to yeah go ahead sorry you've written three books you know how many of your audience have read his books tell me i will tell you most how many are, i mean how many in our audience right yeah. well you can get the comments there you know i would not know zero uh, but, zero comments right now there you go right yeah. exactly and that's what you will tell. see so people will say hey, when is this book getting translated and then i ask like have you read this because the person who is asking me when is gets translated is asking in english so he understands right. english or he or she whoever okay. no they have not read it they will not give that answer so you know this is uh, rajiv malhotra talks about it you know this is like a, again another very tamasic attitude is like to make you feel good make us feel good you know they will ask ke bhai ab kab translate ho raha hai when is this getting translated so we feel oh yeah somebody wants to see the translation the person has not read this the person is not going to read the translation on the other hand i know people oh, i mean this is a true story and actually i know their names i'll just not mention they are uh what you call say they are deaf uh, but they also cannot speak okay uh, what you call i mean the, the right word they cannot speak also they the hearing they have dumb to use and dumb and they have to use different instruments uh to listen to this can you imagine those people listen to my talks listen to our talks and that's why they ask like can you pl- please put some closed captions if not they work with somebody uh, to get it uh, translated get it created into through the machine they can uh, hear that or something so those people with such disadvantages are doing it and the people with perfect set of eyes perfect set of ears perfect set of mouth and teeth and everything are wasting their times on the tv and just asking guys please dilute please give me the essence of it no essence of it can be given but if you want it to be internalized sometime why why vasudev has read given bhagavad gita in 700 verses but then also have written a 100000 plus verse mahabharat because the bhagavad gita is a essence but if you want want to internalize it then you have to read mahabharat that's right slowly slowly it's going to seep in like the way you said inch by inch you know and <laughs> not yard by yard that's too hard yeah that's a good one and uh, one last thing i'll say actually 10 people have read it they just said it 10 oh very good books, okay congratulations so, to them and and uh, they say for my books they have written they have said 120 people have read it so far see so, okay so so uh, so finish start com- i mean complete aditya ji's books and then get to my books you know no 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 simultaneously <laughs> read it because simultaneously read one in the morning one in the evening yeah yeah because you have a lot of technical details also which i had not covered the nakshatra position and all those things i have not covered so so you read his books to understand the astronomy and also the 
proofs, mathematical proofs, I will say, mathematical proofs. Right. So more needed, uh, right. And for the context, you can read Aditya's books, you know, then you know what is this whole thing going on, you know, and it's not just a story, but it's a itihasa. So, so thank you so much, Nilesh ji, and uh, thank you. And I did cover the points of the Udaipur incident that how Varnashram can solve those kind of issues. And believe me, Varnashram is not just for Bharat or for Hindus. Varnashram is for the whole human society, for all the 7.8 billion people on the planet. And so, and the Sanatan Dharma is also for the 7.8 billion people on the planet. Everyone must follow Sanatan Dharma. It doesn't mean conversion. Sanatan Dharma is uh, outside of religion. But, uh, but, uh, and it is the essential, you know, peace is there because of Sanatan Dharma, not because of religions. The religions have created wars. Yes. Sanatan Dharma maintains peace. So avoid religions because organized religions have always been a problem for everybody, including the Americans. Americans, I am part of the whole group, one 60,000 people, atheist agnostic group. And they, every day they say that how the religions have destroyed their life. So thank you so much for joining. And do comment and let us know your feedback. And also, if you have any questions, you can do that. And you can always search Nileshok on Google, Amazon. Uh, and, uh, and also, you can get my books on Barnes & Nobles as well. Now, they're on mainstream. And you can get it on Penguin. You can get it on Kapoth. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Google and also Walmart. So, Very nice. Thank you so much for joining. And namaskar. Namaskar. namaskar.